Hello and welcome to episode 2 of my RuneScape tutorial Let's Play series. This episode is going to be on doing the quest The Blood Pact. Now in the last episode I wasn't a member, uh, I was on free to play. Remember with free to play not only are skills limited, also the world map, um, most of it is out of bounds to you as a free to player, as a playing free to play. So that's another reason because there's certain areas it's great to gather resources in and they're generally in member only areas. Anyway, so this episode's about doing this quest, the Blood Pack, and that's simply because uh, RuneScape's recommending I start there because I'm going to get a free weapon, so why not? Um, my mentor, Gudrick, remember, he's my mentor he, in Tavoli. He's telling me as well to begin the quest, talk to Zan Xenia in the Lumbridge Cemetery. So I'll okay that. And up here in the mini map, I'll use that. Now, notice now that I'm not in Tutorial Island, I get, can get these double arrows around the mini map. So what I can do is I can drag that to up here, which is. I guess giving the time and I can move this to the corner and I can make the mini map bigger which makes life so much better and that was something that when I first started playing you had just a circular map you couldn't expand it it was just a tiny little circle and it was so frustrating but now look I can just click where I need to go and for gathering resources that is invaluable if for some reason your map is circular that means you're playing and you can't resize the mini map that means you're playing in legacy mode so if you were to press the escape key and down here you'd be making sure it says runescape free if it says however um, is it retro if it says retro then then uh, basically you'll need to turn the pathing off and then switch the pathing back on and select RS3 but you should be seeing the minimap just like I am there okay something I had to do was the sound so in order to adjust settings like that if you click on this cog and uh, or press the escape key go to settings there's all the settings you're used to in any game so for this one I needed to do the music because otherwise it'd been it's lovely music but it might have been a bit loud. As you go to new areas you unlock new music and there is a music player there so let's show you that. So I turn the music down hopefully it's at a level not too loud but you can still hear it slightly. Okay so if we go down here on that cog music player you'll say you'll see here's all of the different songs you can unlock. Uh, you go to their areas, they then become green, and that means that they can then play. I've got mine set just to play automatic songs choose on upon the area that I'm in. So anyway, right, let's talk to Xenia. I'm glad you've come by. I need some help. What help do you need? Some cultists of Zamorak have gone into the catacombs with a prisoner. I don't know what they're planning, but I'm pretty sure it's not a tea party. There are three of them, and I'm not as young as the last time I was here. I don't want to go back, to go down there without backup. I'll help you. Okay, so when you are accepting a quest, this window will pop up for you to actually accept the quest and here it tells us required items so if you wanted to know what you need to have for this quest to take from your bank or to go and gather you'd click on this oh, I can... so I've clicked on it and for this particular quest I don't need any required items so that's good and you can also see what rewards uh, here it's telling us must be able to defeat three low level enemies which we can that's why the game's recommending it. And if we want to see the rewards, you can see we're going to get a quest point, a sword, a charge bow, and a magic staff. I think that's saying behind that. And also Dane defense ranged and magic XP. 
and access to the catacombs and a couple of treasure keys which is also a fun little thing you can do so I'm going to accept there we go and complete the quest for further help refer to the quest journal so that's the um, mentor down here I knew you would we've got no time to lose you head down to the down the stairs and I'll follow okay so if I look here you'll see enter catacombs little cinematic come on Carl we don't have forever Look, Reese, are you sure about this? There must be some other way we can. We made a blood pack, Carl. The three of us are in this all the way. Yes, but... Do we have to take this idiot? Yes, the blood pack. You read the book. Let me go. I didn't make any blood pack. That's a loner who they've kidnapped. Shut up. Carl, you stay here, guard the door. You come on. Okay, so it's telling us about moving, which we know already. So if I look around here, you'll see there's Carl. And we're going to have to fight him to get past him. So let's walk in. And I'll click on him, because he's going to start shooting at us. Oh, here we go. Ah. It looks like I'm too old for this after all. You'll have to do the rest without me. I've no doubt you're a skilled warrior, but I think I can help you make more of your talents. Open the powers and in powers interface. This can be accessed from the ribbons or the escape menu. Access by pressing the escape key. Look for the symbol. Okay, so here's the powers window. Here you will find all your abilities and prayers. Success in combat depends on careful use of these powers. I'm actually a lazy gamer and I set it to just do it automatically for me. This interface allows you to add abilities to your action bar so you can use them in combat. Okay, so oh, now you can use the slaughter ability in combat. So it's added my abilities that I can currently use down here on the action bar. Now left click the overpower ability and drag it into your action bar so it's showing us here how to get them onto your action bar. So you left click and drag and drop. There we go. Some abilities can only be used with adrenalines. Whenever with adrenaline I should say. Whenever you use a basic ability you will build up adrenaline which is what I mentioned in the last episode that yellow bar. As that gets higher you're then able to do higher level skills which require that amount of adrenaline. Once you have enough adrenaline you can use threshold and ultimate abilities. There we go so it's explaining about this one here. I'll follow you, but I'll stay out of combat. Return to me if you're wounded. I have some food to share. Yum yum. The first cultist is using a ranged weapon, so you should attack him with your melee weapon. So it's telling us there, the best way to attack ranged enemies is with melee. And the best way to attack melee enemies is with magic. So let's continue. Um, I won't ask the rest of that. Uh, wait a minute, actually this one I will because it might be uh, helpful to you. Tell me more about melee combat. There's not much to tell, just run up and attack. You don't even need a weapon, you can use your fists. Melee combat is strong against rangers. Oh, so it's rangers you used melee combat against. Avoid magic users though. So it's ra ranged armor you use against magic users. And a ranged combat against magic users. Yeah, so I can handle this. Okay, so we left click on him. And then it'll just go and attack with our dagger. 
gonna stab him. And you see it's using the skills automatically, that's what I like. Some of you no doubt though would prefer to manually do that. You'll notice that his health bar and my health bar is this green one, but you can see down here my hit points. So I'm alright, I'm doing fine. Oh, it's telling me use my threshold ability, but it's being done automatically, so... And you can see we're beating him. Well, he is only a really simple opponent to start the game with. You can see my adrenaline has gone right up now, nearly full. For as long as you're fighting, that's going up until you use skills which will drain it. And there you go, done. Are you going to kill me? Uh, well, we could uh, get some story behind this. I have some questions. Yes, I'll tell you anything. Who are you? My name's Carl. I'm a ranger. Well, I've been practicing the charge bow. I guess I wasn't as good as I thought. Who are the others? Reese is the leader. All this, the blood pact. It was his idea. He doesn't know magic, but he's a strong fighter. Caitlin is a wizard. She was a student at the wizard's tower, but she left. She wanted to study dark magic. What were you planning to do down here? I don't really know, honestly. Listen, Reese used to be an acolyte at the church here. He discovered something about these catacombs. I don't know what. Something about how they were built, I think. Caitlin was a student at the Wizard's Tower. She found something too in the ruins of the old tower from back when Zamakorian. Oh, Zamor uh, wizards used, used it. There you go. Caitlin and Reese put what they'd found together. They said they'd discovered a ritual they could perform, something that could give them power over life and death. We made a blood pact, the three of us, so that we'd be in it together, whatever happened. Then we kidnapped Ilona. She was another apprentice from the Wizard's Tower, some, someone Caitlin had known there. Reese and Caitlin are going down there to perform the ritual. I don't, I don't know what it involves. Enough questions. Are you going to kill me? No, just give me your stuff and get out of here. Well, he was repentant. I don't think that cultist will be any more trouble. I'm glad you didn't have to kill him. I think the second cultist was using magic. You should use a ranged weapon to defeat magic users. Ask me if you need any help. Okay, so he dropped this bow. Carl's bow. Which handily is what we need in order to fight the Caitlyn. So just left click remember and it will wield it. Here we go, I've now got a bow. Open the powers interface. This can be accessed from the ribbon. Oh, I've read that already, so let's just click this. And these are your ranged abilities. Okay, so the first one's piercing shot. So it wants me to drag and drop it. So let's do that. Now you can use the piercing shot ability in combat. Why, thank you. So there we go. Right, let's continue on. So now I need to click on open the tomb door. And there's Caitlin over there. So I may as well just attack her. You can see her health's going down nice and quick because I'm using the right tool, the right job. It makes a huge difference if you do uh, the right kind of attack. And there we go. Well done. You'll need to open the gates to reach the other gallery. There should be a winch nearby. 
Okay, so there's the winch. You see the bars coming down. Right, now let's walk around here and talk to her. What are you waiting for? Finish me. I have some... Do I have any questions? See what she says. What? What were you planning to do down here? Idiot hero, you don't even know what this place is, do you? This is the tomb of Dragoth Nern. Dragoth Nern was a necromancer. He lived in Lumbridge decades ago. He kept his necromancy, necromancy secret. Everyone thought he was just a wealthy nobleman and a wizard. He paid for these catacombs to be built and he's interred here in a special tomb. Rhys was an acolyte here at the church. He learned that Dragon Dragoth Nern was buried here. I was a student at the Wizard's Tower. In the library I discovered a note left by Dragoth Nern. The body of a necromancer contains powerful magic. We learned we could perform a ritual on his tomb to unlock the secrets of his work. We would, we would have gained mastery over life and death. Okay, so enough questions. All right, now finish me. Um, well, she is a bad person. She did get that other person to to kidnap, so we will show mercy. I'm not killing you, just give me your stuff. The second cultist passed me on her way out. I don't think she'll be any more trouble. I'm glad you didn't have to kill her. I think the third cultist was a swordsman. Magic is the best thing to use against melee fighters. Speak to me if you need any help. Okay, so how wonderful we now have Caitlin's staff. So let's click on that. You notice their accuracy 160 and the damage is magic. A very nice thing about RuneScape is you can do whatever fighting style you like. So let's open this and let's drag this down. What's it saying? These are your magic abilities. And so the first ability I can use is uh, Rack. A powerful attack that deals up to 94% active spell damage, inflicts up to 188% damage against stunned or bound opponents. And there we go. So it will now automatically use that skill because I have a staff equipped. So depending on what type of item you have equipped, whether you have a dagger, a bow or a staff, it's depending on what type of attack you will be using. Okay, let's go down the stairs. The potion is ready. Where are the others? The whole group should be present. Let me go. Shut up. Who are you? What are you doing here? My name is Gamester. I'm an adventurer. Oh, here we go. I'm like this one. I'm Gamester. Don't worry, Ilona. I'm here to rescue you. Thanks, Saradom. He's insane. He's going to kill me. Maybe you can take her place as the sacrifice adventurer. Stand and fight. Okay, so I just need to click on him. There you go. Death from above completed. And down here you'll see it tells us, congratulations, you've completed death from above. I think that is an achievement. Uh, but you'll see there's tasks, achievements, and quests. It can get a little confusing, but I'm going to show you, uh, as it becomes relevant, how to get access to these different items. 
and the game also will sort of guide us. So you can see his health's going down nicely because I'm using the right type of attack against him, i.e. magic, because he's melee. See my hit points are hardly getting affected as well. But don't be fooled, not all opponents are this easy. This is only because this is beginning uh, enemies. As with any game, it'll get much more difficult. You've beaten me, adventurer. Now strike the final blow. End the blood pack pact in this tomb. I have some questions. Ask your questions. What were you planning to do down here? End Suradim's dominance over Lumbridge. The tyrant god shall fail. With the blood pact and the power of the tomb of Dragarth Nern, we would send an army of dead to claim this town for Zamorak. Enough questions. Then finish me. End the blood pact in this tomb. I'm not killing you. Give me your stuff and get out of here. No, there must be death, a death. The blood pact must be complete, but there's not three of you, you foolish person, so your blood pact won't be complete. But anyway, he thinks he's got to die, so he'll drink some poison. And then he dies. Ooh. Alright, the blood pact maybe can get completed. The warrior dropped his melee weapon. Left click to pick it up. Okay, so let's pick it up. So you see the game's now given us one of each different type of weapon. Ah, we've got two in actual fact. You wield one in your main hand and you can dual wield one in your off hand. Help, untie me so we can get out of here. So I'm going to equip them because I've got a cunning feeling that I'm going to need them. So left click on both to equip them both. And then talk to Untie Alona. Are you ready to return to the surface? Yes, rescue Alona. Okay, okay, maybe that is it. I thought some nasty beastie was going to come out and have to fight me. Thank the gods, we're out. I thought I was going to die down there. You saved my life, whoever you are. Thank you. Well, adventurer, it looks like you have prevailed. You should keep the cultist weapons as a reward. Is there anything you want to ask before you seek out new adventures? I'm ready for my reward. Let's cut to the chase. Give me my reward. Farewell, adventurer. Okay, so I completed the quest, and this is how it goes in RuneScape. When you do a quest, um, you will get a window when you finished it appear like this, and it may give you some quest points, one or more, and different items down here for your rewards. So for doing this, we got one quest point, we got the uh, melee weapons you're seeing over here, we got an experience lamp, that contains 100 attack XP, strength and defense ranged and magic XP. We got access to the Lumbridge Catacombs dungeon, because it's a dungeon, the deeper you go, not only the more you know, but the tougher the creatures get, and the better the loot. And we got two treasure hunter keys. So let's continue. And I've got a total now of two quest points. You have earned the Pathfinder hood. Ah, so it's given us some clothing. You have earned the Pathfinder jacket. And I've completed the quest, the Blood Pact. So you've just received an XP lamp, which can be rubbed to increase your skills. Oh, and I've also completed Varrock. Okay, I think it's saying I must go to Varrock. Yeah, it's saying congratulations, you have completed Varrock. Activate the lodestone in Varrock. So if I open that up, 
see all of these have got padlocks because I've got to travel to them to unlock them. Okay, so it's telling me to, to go there. Let's just follow what, what the game's saying at the moment. So we'll do that because we can travel back. It's what the mentor or demon slayer. Okay, so the game is guiding us here. It's it's uh, if we bring up the quest window, let's see if it shows that. So demon slayer. Yeah, there's the quest there, demon slayer. So if we look at that. Um, It's telling us the location in Barrack. No requirements. Its length is short. Required items are none. Uh, you must defeat several cultists and a powerful demon. Um, now the quests are done in ages. Uh, RuneScape started in the 4th age and the quests you will be finding will be 5th age quests and 6th age quests. Uh, the Sixth Age are obviously newer quests and th the game always recommends you do all the Fifth Age quests before the Sixth Age, just so the storyline will make more sense to you, the lore of the game. Um, but I would say to you, at this point, there are so many different things you can do. Uh, I'm going to go back to Lumbridge to give you a little tour of Lumbridge and show you around there. Um, because that quest I'll do in the next episode. So I want to use up the remainder of this time just to show you around Lumbridge where we started. I'm going to go back there. And the next episode I'll do the Demon Slayer. I want to try and make each episode relevant to the title. So we finished the Blood Pack, but Lumbridge is an important place, even now. I know there are other areas the game will try and take us to 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 go, but because I started old school RuneScape, I feel a bit bonded to this start area, and there's a good reason for it in actual fact. The reason I like to start in Lumbridge is because you can get achievements, and one of the achievements you can do will reward you with a ring which you can, is called the Explorer's Ring and you can use it to teleport around. Now if you combine that ring's teleportation with the lodestone teleportations it just is just such a light, you know, like the Explorer's Ring is very very useful for the farming skill because it will eventually, once you've done enough achievements, give you the ability to teleport to the farming patches uh, so we'll get to that, but for now that's why I like starting in Lumbridge. So let's show you first how you can access the achievements. The way I do it is if you left click on the skills window, and then if you left click on one of the skills, doesn't matter which one, that brings up this hero window. And if we left click on this far right tab, it says achievements. And if we click on exploration, and we look down this list, you can see there are all the different towns and places, because you've got the wilderness, and there's some skills, and these achievements. I love doing achievements. It's um, because I like, I like having goals. This, in RuneScape, it's so huge. You, what can overwhelm you is what to do. You can either go uh, skilling up by chopping trees or fishing or you can go questing or you can go on challenges needless to say you can do so many different things you might end up just sitting there because you're overwhelmed with what you can do so the way I always like to start playing RuneScape from the beginning is with these achievements and I like starting with the Lumbridge which are easy achievements and they give you an idea about different parts of the game so up here you can see we'll learn about the Doomsayer and um, that is the first one so if I left click on that oh okay now I can't pin it I was hoping I could pin it 
Um, but up here it says speak with the doomsayer about, doomsayer about the warning system. All of this stuff is going to be within the Lumbridge area. Oh, there's the timer. So let's have a look at the map. If we press the M key, it brings up the world map. The world map shows all the main features of the game world. To explore the map, simply move the mouse while holding down the left mouse button. To zoom in and out, use the mouse wheel. So here we are, denoted by this cross. Uh, the key explains what the different map icons mean. To control the amount of information shown on the map, use the checkboxes. Okay, so over here you can tell it I leave them all ticked because it's very handy. So we're here in Lumbridge. If I scroll the mouse wheel, we can zoom in. And generally, if you hover over anything, it will give you information about what that is, that item. So up here we can see is the bank. Now in the old days you had to go to the top of the castle in order to get to the bank but fortunately now there's been lots of changes and there's a bank just north of Lumbridge. The map world opens centered on your current map position. If you want to look at a different map such as a dungeon interior or the runescape surface when you're underground you can choose the map here so it's talking about that drop down arrow if you know the name of the place you're looking for you can type it into the search box there you can double click the map to set a map marker you can clear your map marker from the legend or by right clicking on the map marker okay this button closes the world map so that one just there Okay, so I want to do the first achievement, so let's close this. I was wondering, you see, whether it would... Uh, sh that's as much as you can zoom in, by the way. Now, here, if I hover over it, you'll see it's the Lumbridge Lodestone. And up here is the, um, the achievement I was talking about to get us the Explorer's Ring. And it's given by the Taskmaster. Uh, denoted by that green icon. So if we look down the left, Taskmasters have green icons, Quests have blue icons. So let's close the map though. And in order to do that achievement, we need the Doomsayer, which is just there. So if I left click on him. Okay, let's see if I can bring up at the same time, oops, my achievement window and let's go back to it good it's now it's moved so let's quickly go back to what I wanted exploration lumbridge so speak with the doomsayer let's move that over there let's talk to him now doom where all around us I can feel it in the air Hear it on the wind, smell it, also in the air. Is there anything we can do about this doom? There is nothing you need to do, my friend. I am the doomsayer, though my real title could be something like the danger shooter. Danger shooter? Yes, I roam the world sensing danger. If I find a dangerous area, then I put up warning signs that will tell you what is so dangerous about this area? If you see the signs often enough, then you can turn them off. By that time, you're likely to know what the area has in store for you. But what if I want to see the warning signs? Again, that's why I'm waiting here. If you want to see the warning signs again, I can turn them back on for you. And there we go. You hear that sound? Well, you'll see in a minute what it means. Thanks. I'll remember that if I see any warning messages. You're welcome. And there you go. Completed. Doom. And over here, you see that? I think that just went up to three. Yeah. You see, it's removed from the top. And if I scroll down to the bottom... You see there, it's got a little star 
I've come well, now I can favourite it in fact I don't know why I'd want to but uh, so you can see it's got a little green check mark that means it's done so that is the first Lumbridge achievement done and I've got to decide how I want it because the time has gone so I need to end this episode I'm sorry about o overlapping but anyway I just wanted to try and show you the direction that I usually go in so what I'm I don't know I was, I'm gonna do this series as a mix of questing a bit of everything so I am though gonna start by doing the beginner Lumbridge um, achievements and we'll see how we go from there and do some questing Wherever you are in the world, God bless you and keep you safe. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. Goodbye.